There's no bombs. No bombs. Oh, I shouldn't say bombs. I remember my brother saying bombs at the airport and this guy stopped him. It's like, hey! It's like, ah, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, I don't know this guy. <laughs> Using the power of story to build powerful software products. Now this is a super fun video for me because I know a lot of folks that get challenged sometimes of building the right experience that's gonna engage customers right off the bat. Get them motivated to sign up for the product, become activated and end up loving, and this is key, referring their software um, because a lot of them are challenging like how do we get people to take action and I feel like maybe the setup process is too complicated. And for me, what I've learned over the years, you know, I was super uh, lucky to share an office building with Twitter. So Flowtown, when I started that company, it was a venture-backed company, social marketing app. Um, we were on the first floor, Twitter was on the fourth floor. And one day, my friend Laura called me up and said, hey, uh, I want you to meet my friend Josh. He just came from Facebook. He was leading uh, growth there, I believe. And uh, they just hired the, him at Twitter to fix their onboarding and their growth challenges. So I was like, yes, please sign me up. So I went upstairs, took the elevator all the way up, and I was talking to Josh, and you know, I had done a lot of market research. When I moved to San Francisco, one of my areas of expertise was, was marketing and product and trying to understand what caused you know, software and features to grow uh, organically and really get distribution. So I was talking to Josh about some ideas I had. I was just asking, like, are you gonna add this? You gotta add that? He goes, no, because it would actually tell the wrong product narrative. And I was like, what does that mean? He's like, you know, he started unpacking the work he's done. And, and the short version is that no matter what you do, your product will tell a story to its customer. And that starts with the homepage and the language you use there, the onboarding experience, how you set up that experience for the customer, and finally, what you ask them to do or what's the first interactions when they first get going in the product, you know? And he explained to me, you know, like Instagram, he goes, a lot of people, they think that Instagram is a social network for photos. And the truth is, is even though that's a byproduct, one of the core, uh, aspects of, the, of, of Instagram is to take a photo, add a filter, and share it on social networks as fast as possible. So what I wanna share with you guys is the product story framework. How do you think about your software as it relates in the three core areas that you need to identify and kind of move forward? The first one is the homepage, specifically these two characteristics. One is called the hook, the other one is called the promise. The hook is the what. What does your software do? If you go to you know, the sas1000.com list or the Montclair 250 top, you know, publicly, for the most part, publicly traded, at least biggest SaaS companies, software companies in the world, um, and you look at their homepage, they follow this pattern. It's the hook. What do you do? The easiest way to send invoices, the fastest way to understand your personal finances, whatever it is, that's the hook that tells somebody like, this is for me. Now, the promise is how they do that. And that might be um, uh, mobile management of your money using reports, et cetera, et cetera. Like those are usually the features or benefits. They say it in that kind of right underneath it. And if you, again, go look at these homepages. Underneath that, there's usually a button with a CTA, a call to action to sign up for free, no credit card required in little brackets, et cetera. That is the most valuable area to focus on. At the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you guys a tip on how to, to really get through those iteration and tests as fast as possible using a quantitative method that you're not gonna to wanna to miss. But you know that homepage experience, how you communicate what you do and how you do it is what is going to set the positioning and the frame of the customer in their mind. Once they get into your product, they're gonna be looking for evidence of what you said on the homepage. So if you're not deliberate, you're not thoughtful, you're not intentional about that language, it could really hurt you from activating and engaging customers, especially in that first time user experience. Second big part of the product story framework is to ensure that you have an incredible onboarding experience. The way I like to think about onboarding is it's the setup, it's the level one uh, of a game. It is the three steps that you ask the user to do that it tells a story. It's like, why are you asking me to do this and why is this second? So for example, with Josh at Twitter, he said to me, I said, well, are you gonna add an address book importer to kind of like build a viral 
K factor. And he said, we could do that, but the truth is, is Twitter's not a social network. And if somebody came in and that was the first thing we asked them to do, they would go, well, I already have a social network, so I don't need this new product, right? Whereas what Twitter is really about is consumption of media, content. It's, it's a content consumption platform. So the first thing we wanna do is get them to start following people based on their interests and who they know and, and maybe celebrities and authority figures so that if they went to their feed, even if they never tweeted or shared anything, their personal feed would have incredible content that's relevant to their lives. And if we can do that, then we can get them to stick and stay around. And that was really fascinating for me. It's just the sequence of steps. Now they still had the address book importer so that they could create kind of some distribution for the product, but that was like the last step right? Not the first thing. And again, how you present your product, how it unfolds will tell a story. Now you can either be deliberate about it or it's just, you know, a byproduct of you building your software. I'm a big fan of being intentional. The third big area is the core value. What is that moment in your product that if a ex customer experiences, they will retain, they will activate. Some people call that the must have experience. Some people call it the aha experience. I just call it the core value. At the core of an Instagram, um, it is not about the photo sharing, uh, it's not about the social network of photos, it was about the easiest way to take that photo, add a filter, and share it on the social network of their preference. And that's why they beat out, in it. and back in the day of Instagram, there were a ton of photo sharing or photo taking, editing, annotating apps out there. I mean, probably like 50 of them in the, in the app store and they just cut through the noise because they said, here's our product hook, or here's the core value, and we're gonna just drive people in the sign-up process to understand that, to get there, to do that action in the first time they sign up and get that experience so that they come back and they use, they tell their friends about it, and that's how you build a product that gets what's called VWOM, viral word of mouth marketing, and it's a beautiful thing that really uh, can expand your distribution. Now, if you, want, if you want to learn the right way to test your product hook and your promise, because this is really where people get stuck, my tip is to use AdWords. You know, AdWords gives you a restricted amount of details for the title and the description, usually the same amount that you'd want on your homepage right, right above your, your kind of call to action button to get people signed up in your software or request a demo or whatever your sales funnel looks like. But you can use AdWords to quickly iterate and test different tests, multivariant tests, the specific targeting to just see what the click-through ratio is. And just getting the, the CTA or the uh, language that gets the highest click-through will give you some real data because most people want to split test their homepage, but the truth is they don't get enough traffic. And the fastest way is put that in front of an ad show it to your ideal customer, see which one gets the highest click-through rate and the most engagement, then test that on your homepage and keep iterating from there. So three core areas. One, just nail your homepage's hook and promise. Two, ensure your onboarding experience is a clear three-step setup process that really tells the story and the narrative of driving them towards Finally, the third thing, which is the core value of your product, that aha, that must have experience to just make your product deliver for your customer. That is my challenge to you, uh, is to build something that is spectacular, leveraging the story narrative so that, uh, and if you're stuck, here's another tip. Ask your customers how they explain your product to a friend or colleague. That question will unlock the language and even the things you might want to front load in your product. Another tip, and I apologize, I just, I'm just really excited for you. There's an opportunity for you to analyze the click stream in your software. If you have products and users, look at the click stream of your top customers, top 20 customers. Look at the path. Where did they come in? What did they use? What features did they use? What were they exposed to? What did they set up? And try to figure out what's the 80-20? What's the common path and click stream that they use that got them to experience that aha or gratitude or whatever moment that will get other customers retained. So you wanna front load that in your new user onboarding experience. That's what I got for you today. As per usual, I wanna challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business, and I'll see you next Monday. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel for other tips and tricks on how to scale your SaaS company. And I also encourage you to join my newsletter where I send out exclusive invites to events, free training, and other community contests. And if you're ready to get going, I got two more videos queued up for you. I will see you next Monday.